uh, all of you who are directly or indirectly engaged in Congress are going to be faced uh, with a very important opportunity uh, in the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, it's a major opportunity to focus both diplomacy and development uh, on the major challenges that are going to face all of us uh, in the uh, first half of this century. Uh, these challenges are laid out, as uh, Jeff DeBelko said, and the opportunities are laid out in this first ever quadrennial diplomacy and development review, or the QDDR for short, which was released a few months ago by the State Department and which, as we speak, the Secretary of State has all 100 plus ambassadors uh, from each U.S. Embassy in Washington to be briefed on the meaning of the QDDR. Uh, it is, joins the Presidential Security Directive uh, which sets overall government U.S. policy in an interesting way. It's a document that deserves to be taken very seriously, despite the fact that it's 250 pages long, and uh, the executive summary itself is fully 25 pages, uh, because it lays out a major rethink of both American diplomacy and American development policy. And uh, for many of you here, it's likely to involve uh, congressional action of all various sorts uh, before the debate is over. Much of what's in the QDDR is to be applauded. Uh, conceptually, it aligns diplomacy and development as key and importantly equal uh, priorities for U.S. foreign policy. It takes into account that the world has changed, that U.S. policies need to change with it. That's notably the rise of lots of other actors in the development business itself. South Africa has just opened a development program in many countries. The U.S. is by far and away the smallest provider of development assistance and it certainly is dwarfed by private transactions of both trade and finance. It pledges to be re rebuild our development agency, USAID, as the preeminent uh, global development institution uh, with, for the first time in many years, new policy planning uh, capacities, a heavy emphasis on evaluation and results, and a much diminished dependence on, foreign, on contractors for carrying out what aid does. Reorganizes the State Department to take on transnational issues, uh, such as economic growth, energy, climate change, and health and food, and it assigns new authorities to ambassadors to coordinate all U.S. government programs uh, in their country uh, and uh, makes the aid mission director the chief advisor to the ambassador. Uh, so this is a major change uh, if it's put in place and if it succeeds. But it's worth remembering that it's not the first attempt to reform and realign U.S. development programs. Uh, the last major reform of U.S. development programs took place in 1961 when, looking around the room, I would guess there are an awful lot of people who weren't yet born in that period of time. Since that time, there have been seven major attempts uh, to reform development policy, and all of them have failed partially or completely, and there are good reasons why they failed, and in the, benefit, in the interest of time, uh, if you want to ask about them, I'd be happy to uh, talk for a little bit on why they all failed. The QDDR is now out. Uh, as I said, uh, all U.S. ambassadors are being briefed on it uh, as we meet here, uh, but no one should ever uh, underest uh, underestimate the difficulty of implementing the QDDR provided you can get through the 252, 250 pages. Uh, it's a not a propitious political climate, which I don't think needs any explanations. Importantly, there are major qu questions that are not answered. And let me just run through six of them briefly before I stop and open it up for questions. One is it's really not clear who's in charge. There's a presidential study directive. It sets up a council in the White House. Uh, it's under the aegis of the NSC. Uh, on the other hand, the QDDR uh, implies that it's going to coordinate all U.S. government programs, not just those that are under the aegis of the State Department. Uh, and it's not clear who's in charge. Secondly, is Congress on board? There was a lot of activity, bipartisan activity, in the last Congress uh, to draft new legislation, uh, which was put on hold while the Obama administration developed its, uh, its uh, policies, which resulted in the QDDR. Uh, it's a new Congress, obviously. I don't have to tell anyone that. And uh, a short time ago, 165 of the new House Republicans proposed cutting uh, AIDS budget uh, by 60 or 80 percent. Uh, the third issue is, can old dogs learn new tricks? The aid, the aid agency is rapidly moving quickly to reform itself and rebuild itself from what was a hollow shell and has a dynamic new administrator. Uh, 
In fact, aid and reorganizing aid, however, may be much easier than reorganizing the State Department, which traditionally has given priority to diplomacy and policy analysis. Managing programs, if you're in the State Department, is not the way to the top. Uh, and many attempts in the past have been uh, made to change states' culture, but none have had a really major impact. Uh, the fourth and important question is, how do we make choices about what countries we give aid to? Well, I mean, there are some real horror stories. Uh, if I was uh, uh, a nasty congressman, I'd start raising questions about why we poured $11 billion into Egypt uh, since 1979 and uh, gotten the results we get today. That's a debater's question, not a serious question. Uh, but the QDR sets no criteria. Are we going to continue to put large sums of money into countries that aren't developing? Are we going to follow the uh, choice of issues of food, environment, uh, so on and so forth? Uh, it's, it's a question which is not answered in any of these documents. Uh, two or three key policy issues are totally missing from the QDDR, and they're very important. One's the World Bank which is the world's preeminent development agency. One is the IMF, uh, which has had a major impact, uh, which until recently was not very beneficial uh, for the developing countries. And the third issue is trade, which is, of course, the third rail of uh, American politics at the moment. But trade itself, trade liberalization, has a much greater impact on anything that happens in development uh, than you're going to do with your aid program. And finally, the quintessential Washington question. Who controls the budget? Uh, the budget is, uh, the QDDR asserts that uh, the current budgeting system must be streamlined and significantly revised. It's, it's an admirable goal. Uh, but, uh, it Im and implies that the aid uh, administrator and the deputy secretary of state responsible for the issues will always agree. Uh, but in the real world, there's always very strong differences. Uh, both within the State Department and certainly between the Development Agency and the State Department about how the money is spent on what. And there's no uh, indication from the QDDR uh, about who reconciles them. Let me stop there. Uh, I would underscore to you that this is a very significant change if it's fully implemented. And it is a real opportunity. It's analogous to an issue that uh, Rob Litwak knows a great deal about uh, to the famous directive in the late 1940s which set up the Defense Department. Uh, took a long time, by the way, to implement that whole directive uh, over several decades. Uh, but it's that kind of opportunity that you face now and that you'll be faced with in your NGO or congressional uh, activities. Thanks.